Hi guys, I'm Clystrom FBV, and today we're going to take a look at the new ISDT charger, the ISDT D1. Honestly, this is the charger I wish is in the market when I first started FBV, and I think it's the best beginner charger you can get today. Why? Stick around and I'll tell you why. Oh, and before that, I have covered another ISDT charger in a previous video, and that is the ISDT Q8 which has been my main charger for almost a year now. Uh, link to the video in the description down below and on the top right corner here. So you can check that video out after this video. Well, think about this. When you buy a charger for your smartphone, it plugs into the wall and you have this USB-C if you're Android, Lightning if you're Orange that you just plug into your phone and it just works. Juice flows into your phone and you start charging. On the other hand, when you first bought your drone, you spend however much money on the drone, and then you realize, oh, you need a transmitter, and oh, you need goggles to be actually called a FPV pilot. And just when you thought you are done convincing your wife that no more drone expenses is needed, oh shit, I need me to steal stuff to be called pro. And then, oh shit, I need batteries and a charger, and why the fuck does the charger doesn't just plug into the wall? What I'm trying to say here is that getting into the hobby is expensive, and newcomers usually do not have a very good time figuring out what goes with what in order to get everything to work. Especially when most LiPo chargers out there need an expensive power supply that you cannot easily get. So, why is this the best beginner charger? Well, mostly because it solves all the aforementioned problems. The ISDT D1 comes with a power cord, which you can just plug into the charger. Let's try to do All right, with the AC in, and that's the wall power, you get 100 watts of charging power, which means you can charge 4S batteries at around 6 amp or 6S batteries at around 4 amps. Assuming you're doing parallel charging at 1C, that's four packs in one go for both 4S and 6S, that's around the amount of batteries that a newcomer will go for and it just so happens to fit nicely in like you know one parallel charging port. Like I've mentioned, this is especially useful for people who do not want to spend the money to get a power supply nor feel comfortable building one themselves. But maybe after a few months of FPV and you're thinking to step up the number of battery packs, you could get a power supply along with that battery upgrade and unlock DC in. <laughs> well, you don't actually unlock it, it's there all the while. But once you graduated to use DC power supply, you get 250 watts available to you. And that's 10 amps for both 4S and 6S. Now, the smart guy like you will be thinking, wait a minute. 250 watts divided by 4S70 volts is 14.7 amps, but you just said 10 amps. And I'll be like, aha, you sir are correct, but there's a trap for young players here. If we take a look at the specification in the product page here, it says here that the output current is 0.1 amp to 10 amps. This meant that although the unit is able to charge at 250 watts, it is limited by the output current to a maximum of 10 amps. But don't worry, when you graduate to 6S, you'll be able to fully utilize that 10 amps. While we're here, let's also talk about that other numbers. The maximum input current for the DC in is at 14 amps. So that meant if you want to take full advantage of the 250 watts, you need an at least 18 or 19 volts power supply. Other notable specs are the max discharge capability is 1 amp or 15 watts. Uh, balancing current is at 1.5 amp per cell. The latter two specs just meant that your charging and storage charge uh, tasks will be done a lot faster. All right, done with the specs. The ISDT D1 is a thick boy compared to say my Q8. It is just massive. The reason it is this big is because there's an AC to DC converter, the same thing that's in your smartphone charger inside. It does weight quite a bit, but not excessive. On top, you get this wide cinematic screen with just three buttons below, up, down, and enter. 
The UI is the same as many other ISDD chargers, so you'll feel right at home if you use those before. Uh, you get the main screen, which shows all the voltage, current, and capacity charge. To see the other charger parameters, you press down past the ISR page to this charger parameters page where it shows the input and output uh, voltage and current. It also shows the charger temperature and charge cycles. Do note that uh, like other ISDT chargers, the ISR is only populated during charging. Alright, to start charging, press the enter button once and you get into this task setting page. Here you can choose the task, which most of you will be interested in the charge and storage. DC power is available if you have say a TS100, which you can power it with this charger from the wall. Chemistry, you have all the usual selection. Uh, condition is the target voltage for the task. ISTT went ahead and shows you the rec recommended voltage per cell for each battery chemistry type which is very helpful for beginners. For cells, you can either set it here or it will auto detect if you connect the battery to the charger before entering the page. Lastly is the current. For D1, right off the factory, you get these uh, presets or profile of commonly used values along with all the values from 0 0.1 to 10. To get to the system menu, simply long press the enter button. Here you can tinker with various settings to suit your needs. As a part of the new firmware they are calling SCOS 2.0, you get this dark mode team which I personally like. Now let's take a tour around the exterior of this charger. On top is the screen and buttons. At the front, you get the XD60 and the balance lead connectors. And in the middle, you get the USB-C connector for firmware updates. Nothing on the left and right side. Uh, at the back, you get the connector for the AC power cord and the XT60 for DC power supply. They put both the XT60 and the AC power connector in this particular orientation so that you can plug in both at the same time, which I think is kind of a genius design. Uh, and there's a single fan right here in charge of cooling this entire unit. Now let's talk competitor. The main competition for this has gotta be the ISDT owns uh, 608AC which is also an AC-DC charger with charging capability of 60 watt AC and 200 watts DC. In comparison, the D1 can do 100 watts AC and 250 watts DC. The 608 AC is also an 8M max output current charger which is significantly less than the D1's 10 amps. Not to mention that the 608 AC is almost 60 bucks whereas the D1 is only 20 bucks. But to be fair, the 608 AC is detachable, which meant that the AC portion can be removed if you prefer to bring the unit out to fly with you, and it is also considerably lighter and less bulky. Also, some people prefer the scroll wheel approach instead of the buttons, so that's up to personal preference. Let me know in the comments down below if you own the 608 AC charger and would you switch over to the D1? If yes, why? And at 20 bucks US, it is cheaper than even the best budget option in the market, the Toolkit RT M6, which comes in at 30 bucks if you don't need the extra stuff like servo checker, voltage checker, and all those kind of bells and whistles. But the D1 can do most things that the Toolkit RT M6 can do, and if not, better. So the big question right now is, should you buy it? If you just got into the hobby and is currently creating like a list of things to buy, this right here is a great charger to have in your kit. If you're already a seasoned pilot, you might opt for something more capable like the Hobbymate D6 or the ISDT D2. Both are great chargers, however, this could be a cheap charger that you can bring along on the road since it supports both AC and DC power source in a single unit. Wall power when you are at Starbucks, fuel charge when you are out flying. Alright guys, that's it for my review of the ISDT D1. Uh, leave a comment down below to let me know what do you think about this charger. Links to all the products mentioned are in the description so you can check them out if you like. Also included are review videos for the products from not just me but other YouTubers as well. 
if this video helped you in any way, uh, please consider giving me a like, share it with your FPV buddies, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome videos just like this. I do flight videos, tutorials, and of course, reviews. Again, this is Classroom FPV, and I'll see you in the next video.